Some of us who are extroverts, who are just full of life and energy and uh, trying to, to uh, hold back and to, to, to stay uh, at home and in place and to stay safe and sheltering in. But um, as we know, God is always with us in all situations, and we praise God for that. Pray with me now. Lord, we just come this morning. Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to worship together, to praise you. God, we invite you to come. Come now and pour your Holy Spirit out on each and every one of us, Lord, as we gather in different places. Lord, we gather together to, to worship and to praise you. Lead and guide us with your wisdom as we comfort now in the warmth of your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's sing another. <laughs> Tell them we're loving our King. Our 
bless the name of the Lamb of glory. I bless the name of the King of peace. I bless the name of the Lamb of glory. I bless the name of the King. And when our hands lifted up, we will worship and sing. And when our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship and sing. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoicing. With our hands lifted high to the sky, when the world wonders why, we'll just tell them we're loving our King. We'll just tell them we're loving our King. Let's say it one more time. We'll just tell them we're loving. be together. It's just, uh, although we're in different places, we know that we're together. We're bound together by the love and the Spirit of God with cords that cannot be broken. Uh, as we, uh, now we're a couple weeks past Easter, but we're still in the Easter season, the Easter tide. that, that continues on for a 50-day period, uh, that 50 meaning Pentecost. And at that point in time, May 31st, uh, will be the uh, Sunday of Pentecost and and surely, surely, uh, we have to be together that Sunday. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking a pyro party, uh, something that where the Spirit of God just literally uh, lights us all up, sets us on fire uh, for, for the love of God. As we uh, come this morning, a, a couple commercials and advertisements and, and such and so forth. And uh, if you've got children and you would like to connect with, with our children here, go Go on to our, our, uh, our, our website or our Facebook for our um, MV children. Uh, you can, can find there on uh, Wednesday evenings that uh, Miss Zoe is doing a, a children's uh, program uh, via Facebook Hangout, I think it's called. Uh, you you uh, can, can find that and, and get involved in that. Uh, Sunday evenings at 5 o'clock, Mr. Sean is doing some stuff with, with our youth as well. So, so you may need to, to contact him uh, to do do that uh, and find him uh, on, on the uh, the uh, uh, via via Facebook or, or, or whatever, and, and he can uh, tell you exactly how to get caught up on that. Uh, so some great things, great things are happening. But first, I want to say thanks. I continue to tell you thanks and and praise God for you for your commitment, your dedication to support church and uh, the, the fact is that uh, we have reduced I have cut off everything that, that we're not using as to where it's not wasting any kind of energy and power we've reduced everything uh, that we possibly can uh, to be able to do that and we know that a few people have, have been uh, either furloughed or, or laid off from from work or not able to to go in or maybe even some of our small business Owners have literally been uh, out of business, and I'm sure uh, mathematically that, that if you're receiving no income, that, that the uh, a tenth, a tithe uh, of your income when you're making zero, uh, well, that becomes zero, and we understand that. But for the rest of us that can continue our commitment, our dedication, and I praise and thank God for you that, that we're being able to do that, uh, be able to connect. Uh, be able to connect via you know telephone, uh, text messaging, uh, various different ways that, that we've been able. Hopefully, you're you're really really truly keeping up with each other, keeping up with neighbors, uh, as, as maybe it's uh, you, you know even to get out to to walk in one of the neighbors and you cross on each side different sides of the street. Uh, how different that really truly is for those of us that's extroverted. It's really really a difficult time. I know there's others who are not like that, who kind of enjoy having their space. And I think as we uh, as we come back together, we're going to, to, to find out that that might be more of the norm uh, than it has been uh, as we uh, uh, look and think and continue to, to remember those in, in this time that, that are uh, isolated, who may 
be in a situation to where uh, they're in a time of grief. And, and sometimes uh, that depression itself draws us inside and now we're asked to be sheltered in. But, but hopefully everybody is being contacted and connected with and uh, if there's any way possible uh, at any point in time that you uh, need anything from me, uh, don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call or, or shoot me a message some way, uh, get, get in touch with me. And if there's anything that anybody needs, our food pantry, thanks to our mission uh, team and uh, th those that's been involved in it and those who continue to, to bring donations. It's not unusual uh, when I do come by that, that uh, I, I have groceries to, to bring in to, to continue to support uh, our food pantry and those on the west side uh, who might be hungry. If you know of anybody that's got any kind of need that we can attend to, uh, we certainly want to be able to do that. Uh, I think it's a point in time uh, that for, for the church to understand that uh, we, uh, we can find new ways. Churches do not change fast or easily. It's just, it's just the nature of uh, being a church that, that we don't change uh, very quickly or, or, or very easily. We've been forced into this, and, well, I think it's been a wake-up call. And some of the stuff that I've read over the last few weeks about some of this uh, stuff is uh, certainly uh, going to be implemented and a part of who we are uh, in, into the future. We, we learned that. That, that sometimes we have to be forced. We, we've heard it. We probably said it ourselves. Sometimes God has to slam a door closed for us to move to where God has already opened a, a new door, new ministries, new opportunities, things moving forward into the future. Uh, we continue to, to pray not only uh, for, for those that, that um, are in a time of grief, but those are in a time of rehabilitation, regaining strength from from, from maybe a procedure or uh, set, and, and, and God continue to be with those that we know of who uh, have been fighting the uh, COVID-19 virus, uh, a few names that, that, that we actually know of these people, Lord, that will continue. But, but overall, we praise you. We praise you, God, that, that this has uh, been an experience, and, uh, and, and by far the majority of us have been able to, to withstand uh, and, I, and I literally say that like it's really been hard for us to, to, to just hunker down and, and, and hide from something uh, that, that we really virtually can't even see. But God, we thank you for the very power of your presence and your spirit always with us. Lord, continue to, to lead and guide us each and every day. Uh, pray with me now. Only God, Lord, we just thank and praise you for this time, Lord. We thank you and praise you be. We can be all that you've created us to be. And, and all those things that have, have altered and changed and God just how different it is, Lord, that we put on masks to, to go out and, and to a public place to, to, to go and get a few groceries and, and to retrieve a few things that, that we need only only when we have to go and, and, and to do that. But, but we go with, with covered faces and and God, maybe even into places like banks and, and, and places where uh, wearing a mask might even uh, sound off a, a trigger. Lord, we, we try to find some humor in it. But God, we know that, that we're really, really, truly uh, trying to, uh, to stay safe. And Lord, we, uh, we, we know that you've given us the wisdom. You've given people the ability to, to understand viruses and, and how they're contracted and and although we don't understand why, God, we just praise you uh, for giving us the knowledge and the wisdom and, and encouraging us to do everything we can to shelter in and to stay safe. And, and even uh, the opportunities that you've given some of us that, that we could reach out and, and, and that we could do things for others, Lord, that otherwise might would not never have even accepted uh, uh, now, Lord, that, that we're able to do find a way to share your love and to share your goodness with others around us. God, continue to, to be with the medical community uh, as, as we work through this uh, pandemic. God, as we uh, now know that some doors uh, are being reopened in, in our state, 
uh, Lord, that there's some controversy uh, about this, but God, uh, uh, we're, we're in uncharted waters. So again and again, we turn to you, uh, knowing that you are the skipper, that, that you're our captain, and that you'll lead us and that you'll guide us through these troubled times, God, and we praise you for that as we come now. Lord, and we open our own hearts and our own minds, God, and we pour out before you. Lord, you know us. You know us better than we know ourselves. And in all of our great uh, intentions, Lord, that we still continue to fall short uh, of being exactly who it is that you need us to be. But God, we ask you to lead us and to guide us. Lord, that we can walk in faith and not in fear. That, that we can use what the fear has been there to, to guide us, Lord, with wisdom that, that we remain safe until we can all come back and gather together again. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and amen. I think we have a message in song now. <laughs>
and an ovation job that Miss Sheila did on that. And we uh, praise God for you, Sheila, and, and thank you for being with us. And, uh, this may be, uh, this is one of those texts. It's only in Luke. None of the other gospel writers write uh, about this walk to Emmaus as some of us have come to know that we have a program uh, virtually called Walk to Emmaus. But in this, there's a couple disciples. One's named Cleopas, the other one's not even named. And it's only Luke who shares this, and it's virtually on that first day. It's the, it's the evening of Easter when we turn to this. And one of my first questions literally is, and I'm questioning Luke, as to uh, why did you share this? Uh, as you read this and you understand, and there's several messages in this text, but I'm beginning to say to Luke, why did you share this? It's called the encounter on the Emmaus Road. On that same day, two disciples were traveling to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking to each other about everything that had happened. While they were discussing these things, Jesus himself arrived and joined them on their journey, yet they were prevented from recognizing him. He said to them, what are you talking about as you walk along? And they stopped, their faces downcast. Then the one named Cleopas replied, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who is unaware of the things that have taken place there over the last few days? And he said to them, what things? They said to him, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, because of his powerful deeds and words, he was recognized by God and all the people as a prophet, but our chief priest, and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. We had hoped he was the one who would redeem Israel. All these things happened three days ago, but there's more. Some women from our group have left us stunned. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came to us saying, that they had even seen a vision of angels who told them that he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women said. They didn't see him either. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, your dull minds keep you from believing all the prophets talked about. Wasn't it necessary for Christ to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted for them the things written about him and, and all of the scriptures, starting with Moses and going through all of the prophets. When they came to Emmaus, Christ acted as if he was going on ahead. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us. It's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And after taking his seat at the table with them, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, weren't our hearts on fire when he spoke to us along the road and when he explained the scriptures for us they got up right then and they returned to Jerusalem and they found the disciples and their companions gathered together they were saying to each other the Lord really has risen he appeared to Simon then the two disciples described what they had happened along the road and how Jesus was made known to them as he broke the bread. May God add to us now 
Not only just reading and hearing, but also some understanding of this. It's the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way, for you are the potter, and I am the clay. Amen. As I shared with you, there's more than one. There's more than one message in here. Unfortunately, uh, in, in our uh, rotation of working through the uh, lectionary, we only come to this text about once every three years, and truth be known, uh, I was not supposed to be here today. I was scheduled uh, to, to be at a previous church. I had served in a trip in chapel in Carrollton and, and been doing homecoming there with, with some friends. And, and as I had looked and, and seen it, it was a time of traveling. I even had some thoughts uh, about getting me one of those selfie sticks and my own phone and, and going out on a, on, a, on a dirt road somewhere, uh, maybe someone with me, and walking and, and filming and telling this story as we walked along and thinking about how Jesus had come and, and gathered with Cleopas and this other disciple whom many of us scholars believe that it was probably Cleopas' wife, another one of those unnamed women who were part of that group called disciples. Disciples being those who followed Christ. But, but as, as Jesus uh, joined them and they began small talk. Just common conversation. I think that's what the guys, Cleopas and, and, and the other disciple was thinking, you know. And as, as Jesus, the, the, the risen Christ, literally asked them, hey, what are you guys talking about as you walk along? And, well, what do we talk about? Well, uh, been some pretty weather. Well, it's been rainy. It's been cool. Uh, Blackberry winter's going on right now. And you know, the kind of conversation we have sometimes, you know, and so forth and so on. But Jesus didn't miss the opportunity to begin to ask them, you know, what has happened? Tell me about it. Tell me your version of what's going on. And they said to him, you must be the only stranger that's been in Jerusalem and, and, and does not know exactly what's happening. And he said, what happened? Tell us. Tell us. You know, tell me what has happened. It's important that we know what has happened. It's even more important that we learn it in our hearts to where then we can witness and we can share with others what Christ has done for us, what God has done for us. In all of our lives, we've had situations to where we found ourselves, you know, over the edge or maybe between a, a rock and a hard spot or, or, or whatever you want to say. Uh, variously, uh, over time, every one of us have had something that has occurred or happened to us and so forth. And thanks be to God, we've lived to tell about it. And that's what we need to do. That's exactly what's happening here. Jesus is saying, what happened? What happened? And they began. They began to share. And then Jesus takes over. And he begins to open up the scriptures. It says, starting with Moses through all of the prophets. Understand this. The New Testament hadn't been written yet. So, so literally, they're talking about all the scriptures. But they're talking more about the predictions of what the prophets had told. Like Isaiah 53 talks about the suffering servant and here is the how things would play out as what they had just said. That, that, that Jesus, the one that they thought had come to be the Messiah that would literally put Israel back uh, into that very, very powerful, most powerful nation of all the, the, the earth. Uh, back to the status of when David sat on the throne and, and they could hardly wait to, to be this, uh, you know, triumph kingdom again. But they did not see what was going. And finally, Jesus says to them, you have dull minds. Let me help you. Let me help you understand what God is really truly doing. What, what God is really, truly doing with you and how God is always with you. You may have heard this before, but it 
it's been said that while we're glad that Jesus joins us along the way, uh, the real truth of it is, is Augusta, that the Bishop of Hippo once said, Jesus is the way. It's not Jesus the Christ who joins us along the way, but it's Jesus the Christ who is the way. And that when we come to recognize that, that we can never walk alone. We, we can never be alone. Uh, what greater news for us at this point in time uh, when we're sheltering in, and even those whom we're sheltering in with, after a while, I don't know about you, but it seems as though, uh, you know, it, it's a good thing we got three levels on some of our homes so, so that we can get some separation in, inside of the house and we're not just stuck in a little small uh, cabin somewhere, uh, so forth. You know, enough is enough of anything, but we're never alone. Maybe that's why Luke, Luke needs to share this with us. It, it's like yesterday as I was sharing with you to go ahead and read Luke 24, but I was talking about this amazing thing that Jesus had joined those disciples and, and that he was there with them as they were gathered together and he came in and he told them, peace be with you, shalom. You know, that, that the peace of God always is with you. And, and I shared with you, at the very same time that he was doing this, as we turn to Luke 24, and we find out that Christ is also with Cleopas and some other disciple, that he joins them along the road, and they're in conversation. And, and as they walk along, and, and they, they get to, to where they're going, we're assuming that, that this would be uh, Cleopas' house, or or, or, or their home. That's why I think, you know, possibility that the other disciple was his, was his bride. But they said, they urged him. Uh, I like that word, urged. They urged him. Uh, it's almost dark. Surely you don't want to go ahead and leave. Now just come on in and be with us. You know, and, and, and we'll have some something to eat here. You, you know, we'll break some bread and, and have some wine and, and so forth. And then we hear these very familiar words. Very familiar. And it said, as Jesus, as the Christ, the risen Christ, had taken his seat at their table. How many of us? How many of us from the time that, that we were real, real tiny young children that we learned to say the blessing? We learned that, that every time that we break bread, that we acknowledge the blessings of God, that God is always with us. But it says as Jesus had taken his seat, his seat, as Christ had taken his seat, that he literally had a place at that table, uh, virtually, uh, to, to have a place, or as they say up here in the hills, uh, y'all folks are calling everything a spot, that, that he found his spot. The, the, the Testament, doesn't, the scripture doesn't say that he found his spot, but that's what we always talk about, spots, that if people have to have their spot. Uh, you, you know, there's still a spot open they're talking about. But here, that Christ found his place at the table with Cleopas and the other disciple. That then, as he had taken the bread, and he was breaking the bread and giving it to them, that all of a sudden they recognized. And he'd been with them all this time. At the same time, he's with the disciples over uh, in Galilee and in this room where he told them to go and I'll, and I'll meet you there. Uh, and, and simultaneously that, that he's here and he's in his place. He's in his place at the table with, with these disciples. And it's through this breaking of the bread, it's through this time of fellowship that they recognize who he is. And that he has really, truly, as it had been told to them, well, it sounds like to me, maybe we could read in the fact that somehow, hmm, we, 
wouldn't call them doubters. That's Thomas's job, right? But there must have been a little bit of skepticism there. Has, has this really happened or not? Well, the ladies went and, and, and found the tomb was empty, even had visions of angels, an angel sitting up on the rock being cool, saying, you know, he told you it's going to happen. Now it's happened. Uh, Isaiah had said it was going to happen. Now it's happened. And so forth. And now they're beginning to see for themselves. You know, the historians say that there may not have even been a community named Emmaus. But they, they possibly, it wasn't even there, but it just some distance, seven miles. Well, there's that number seven again, that they had made their way to completeness all the way home. And Christ joins them. Maybe this is what Luke wants us to see. That wherever we are. And what a what better place could it be than being in the center of our homes. Being in the center of our lives. Being in the very center of our families. And acknowledging that, that every time that we come to find our place that we find our Emmaus. We find this time of being together. I don't know about you, but I'm yearning. I'm yearning for communion. I'm yearning for real communion to be together and literally to, to acknowledge the fact that we can be one with Christ and one with each other. That, that we can literally uh, come together. And it's a time uh, for us here at Mount Vernon to where we always come to the altar. Like no other time that we come, we come and acknowledge God's presence, the very love and existence, the Spirit of God that, that is always with us as we come to this. You know, I've recognized over the last several weeks that reading through some of the comments and, and thank you for all of, all of the many of you who have visiting, are visiting with us here in, in the Mount Vernon community via Facebook that, that I've, I've recognized a lot of names. A, 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 a lot of names that, that we don't see here. Names that I, I know that you're my brother or sister, but we just haven't physically met yet. And, and not only have you come once or twice, but now maybe today makes even, I think it's our seventh time uh, uh, of, of having uh, our Sunday worship together, plus some other things that, that we've been able to do. But a time of coming together, and it's that spirit of God. Maybe that's what Luke's wanting us to see. That the very Spirit of God can be with us and to help us to understand where, where is your Emmaus? Where is it that, that you're most at peace with God? Where is it in your own life, maybe for the first time, that you recognize that Christ has died for you? Perhaps that hasn't happened yet. I pray that it does. I pray that it does very, very soon for you. Maybe you're in question. Maybe you're inquisitive enough that you'd want to contact me. Please do. Look on our website, mvlight.org, and there you can find the information uh, where you can contact uh, me. Uh, maybe you're inquisitive enough that you would be willing to say, you know, I want to find my spot. I want to find my place. I want to just thank and praise God that I already know where my Emmaus experience has happened. Where that time that I myself recognized that Christ has died and Christ has risen and the Spirit of God is with me and is well with me. And enough, enough to the point that now if nothing else through the last several weeks, months now, that we have begun to yearn that 
we too might not even be willing to welcome strangers. Hmm. That's yet another part of this text, isn't it? That Cleopas and the other disciple, that they welcome a stranger. That they welcome someone that they didn't even recognize until they broke bread together. They learned how to welcome strangers. Maybe we. Maybe we, as a faith community via Facebook, that we welcome you. We welcome you as a brother or sister in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. And perhaps when, I didn't say if, I said when, uh, we are able to come together physically, that, that you would accept this as an invitation to come and to, to be here with us and become part of this faith community. And faith community, I invite you to accept this opportunity to, to, to be ready and willing to learn more about how to welcome a stranger. They're not really truly strangers, are they? No, they can be filled, or they are filled, with the same spirit and love of God. Where's your Emmaus? Where have you come to recognize God's love God's saving grace for you. Hopefully, you're walking. Hopefully, you're walking and, and existing each and every day and every moment of the day and realizing that we're all in the presence of the Spirit of God. My brothers and sisters, this is where our Emmaus is. Pray with me. Of the God, as we come now, Lord, we praise you, Lord, and we thank you for your very presence and your spirit with us. Lord, that your love and spirit comes and it binds us together with cords that cannot be broken. Although, Lord, we're not physically together. We know that. We know it oh so well. And we yearn. We yearn for that time that, that we can be and can be safely together again. And God, we lift up to you now those who may be visiting with us. Lord, make them our guests. They're not visitors. They're our guests. And let's treat them the way that you treat us with the best that we very well have. And sharing our witness, and our testimony with others of those things that you have done for us. In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Sing with us now a, a, a song. And I change this uh, on, on Jackie this morning. We appreciate all that he does, and, and uh, we're, we're beyond blessed uh, with his uh, leadership here and, and, and all that. But I changed our closing hymn to Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. I hope you know it. Sing it out loud. <laughs>
today is that your heart is filled, overflowing with the very, very Spirit of God until we can gather together again. May you be at peace. Stay safe and shelter in. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you.